QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021, Bank Feeds, Matching Deposit from Customer. Let's get into it with Intuit, QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our bank feeds test file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view drop down, selecting the open windows list. We've been thinking about how we can use the bank feeds to help us to record the activity related to the customer cycle for the receipt of the payment. So now we want to be matching out the deposits. So if we go back down here and review our flow system, we could have a system where we create an invoice. If we create an invoice, no cash is affected. Accounts receivable goes up. The other side goes to sales. Then we could record the receipt of the payment. And then we, we can then record the recording of the payment, grouping the payments together as would be necessary. And then we're going to talk about matching at this point in time. We took a look at examples in the past, matching from the invoice, matching to the received payment. Now we'll take a look at it matching at this point in time. So if you match to the invoice, just as a recap, Remember that this increases the accounts receivable, the other side going to sales when we create the invoice. If you wait until something clears the bank so that then you can use the bank fees to attach to the invoice, then you can use that method. It won't work, however, very well if you have multiple invoices that you will be receiving payments on that will then be hitting the bank in a way that will be matching multiple, multiple invoices. You won't be able to tie it out unless it's the amount hitting the bank ties out to one invoice, basically. So that's what we'll show this time. And then we could have the invoice and then record the receipt of the payment, which would be decrease in the accounts receivable and either record into the checking account or undeposited funds at that point. We could then match this point to the, uh, to the bank feeds at that point in time, whether they go to undeposited funds or the bank accounts. We saw that in a prior presentation. And then we could go the full way through and then make the deposit over here. And then that would be us recording it, decreasing undeposited funds, recording it into the checking account at that point in time. And then we can match what isn't recorded in the checking account to what cleared the bank. And in that sense, no new transaction would happen at that point. But we would be uh, doing the reconciliation process and be part of a kind of like our tying out our books to the bank's books. This last step would be necessary, especially if you have multiple uh, receipts of payment. Say you're getting cash for multiple customers that you're then going to deposit into the bank all at one lump sum. You won't be able then to match the deposit to one particular receipt payment or invoice. And therefore, you have to go through the undeposited funds and then make the payment and then group them together properly in the deposit. So we'll take a look at that now and how we can match. Notice you'd have the same issue with if you're selling stuff at the point in time of sale. Like if you're a restaurant or something, you might be getting cash. You may, let's imagine you're getting cash payments. You will then have to then deposit those payments because uh, you're going to have to group the payments in the same way as they will be seen on the bank statement, which will be all the cash deposited together, not matching out to one individual sales amount. Okay, so let's go through the full process. I'm going to create an invoice here. We'll create a couple invoices and just check this out. This is going to be customer. I'll set up another customer. Customer. This will be customer 10, let's say. I'm not typing well. Customer number 10. And I'm going to set it up. And this is going to be, let's make this as of uh, 06, let's say 21 and 20. And I'm going to say that this is going to be an item. I'm going to set up a new item. Item number, uh, let's say 10, item 10 will match it up and say yes, new item. I'm going to set this one up as a service item. I'm not going to be dealing with uh, sales tax here. Service item, we're going to say this is going to be uh, service 10. That's going to be the name of our service item. And then this is going to be going, I'm going to say it's $50, not taxable, not subject to sales tax. So I'm going to say no here. And then the income account, I'll say, I'm going to set up a new income account. I'll say new income account. And this is going to be our service income item. So service income. And that's going to go to our income account. I'm going to say save. And there we have that. And OK. And so we're going to say that we sold two of these now. So there we have it. It's uh, that'll be a hundred dollars because they're fifty dollars each. So there's our invoice. This will be increase in accounts receivable. Other side then going to the um, other side going to the sales account. No sales tax. No inventory that we have to deal with. Then I'm gonna say let's do another one. I'm gonna go okay. Let's do another one and say save and new, save and new, 
and save anyway and this will be customer number 11 and we'll set that up and this is let's say this happened on the 22nd for customer 11 I'll set up another item which is going to be item number 11 setting it up and we're going to say this is a service item and this is going to be item item 11 it's the name of the item that we sell the service is a service item 11 and this is going to be for 75 dollars and then i'm going to say that uh, this is going to go to our service account service income and then okay we'll just sell one of those so there we have that that will increase the accounts receivable for this customer and the sub the sub ledger will be that customer the other side going to the revenue account we set up so let's do one more i'm going to say save and save and new and then we'll check them out just to double check what happened there save and new this is going to be customer yep 12 customer 12 you probably guessed 12 that's why i said yeah because probably i'm imagining you said 12 and i said yeah so then we have the item which is going to be uh let's say this is going to be another item we're going to set up so i'm going to set up a new item it's going to be a service item it's going to be item 12 so we'll say item 12 description item 12 and the rate here is going to be 20.47 it's not going to be subject to tax non-taxable and then the service account is going to go to is going to go to service income and then save i'm going to say okay and then i'm going to say save and new i can't remember i want to double check that i didn't charge sales tax so i'm going to say save that one and then i'm going to go back so that one looks good this one i charged sales tax to so i messed up that item i shouldn't have charged sales tax i could adjust the item i won't adjust the item now to charge no sales tax i'll just take it off uh right well i have to adjust the item so i'm going to go to the lists drop down i'm going to go to the item list and this is going to be item number 11. i'm going to right click on it edit the item and then i want to say it's not taxable not taxable and okay and then i'm going to go back to the invoice and then i'm going to adjust this i'm going to delete the line item so i'm going to say delete line and this is item 11. so we'll re-add the line i'm going to have one of those and now there's no sales tax so i changed the invoice here i'm going to say save and close yes yes and okay so now if i check those out i'm going to close the items reports drop down company and financial balance sheet let's check them out on the balance sheet here changing the dates from uh let's change it this way let's go up here and change it it won't let me now go 12 21 let's go 12 21 then go up here beginning date 01 01 to 12 31 and okay so then I want to say accounts receivable is going to be going up by those three invoices, the $100 invoice, the 75 and the 20. So then I'm going to close that back out. The other side is going to go to the P&L reports, drop down company and financial profit and loss or P&L, the income statement, changing the dates from 010120 to 123120. Then we have the service income, double clicking the service income. We have those three items in the service income. That's all we have because we didn't sell inventory and we're not subject to sales tax. So then we're going to say, all right, if I go back to the home page, let's say that we got payments for those three invoices at one point in time. We got payment for the three invoices at one point in time. Well, I can't really wait for those to clear the bank because if I got cash for those three, they're going to show up. They're going to show up. You know, I'm going to deposit them at one time into the bank account. So in other words, if I go to my banking transactions up top and we go to the bank feeds and look at the bank feeds center, I'm going to be using this item down below, uh, which is going to be, well, let's sort by the deposits. I'm going to sort by the deposits here and I'm looking for the, the sum of all of them, which is this 195.47. That's all of them together. So all of them added together is this 195.47. Now, if I was to match this out, I could go to details and say, okay, I want to, I want to go to add more details. And then I'm going to go to the matching and I, and I could say, show me all of these. And I could then figure out and I could say, well, that looks like it's this one, like this one and this one. 
add up to there it is 194.47 i can just match it out and i can just go right there you can do that but notice it would be a little confusing to do that because then we have to figure this out and we have a whole lot of invoices then it's going to be difficult to figure out i would like it to clear the bank in the same format that it's going to be on our books so that we don't have to start to, to do this because if we start to make a lot of sales and you're trying to figure out the three invoices that add up to a particular deposit that got deposited in a group lump sum it becomes difficult so how do we fix that well i can close this back out and say do you want to discard yeah i want to discard the changes we're going to go back to the home page we can then record the receipt of the payment as we get the payment so now we got to receive the payment as we get the payment and so i'm going to say that we got the customer number 10 payment and let's say it was cash i'm going to check it off and say there's the 100 dollars that we got on you know 629 let's say that's what we got now it's going into undeposited funds accounts receivable will decrease and then it'll it'll increase undeposited funds not hitting the check account checking account yet at this point in time so i'm going to say save and new and okay and then let's do the same for the the next one which was number 11 there's the invoice again i'm saying we got cash so now we got 75 dollars cash it's going to increase our undeposited funds if i record this decrease the receivable so i'm going to say all right save and new and let's do it one more time for that last one we did which was number 12 and i'm going to check that off and so there's the 20 dollars 47 we're going to say we got cash it's going to go into undeposited funds decreasing the accounts receivable increasing undeposited funds having not yet hit the uh, cash account or the checking account so I'm going to say save and close now, save and close. And then if we see what happens up top, we're going to go to the balance sheet within the, uh, we see that in the accounts receivable, we see these items going back down now for the 100. Now it goes down the 75 and the 20. They all happened at the same day. So now we're going to go to the bank at the end of the day and deposit them. So, and that happened on 628 because right now they're all in undeposited funds right there they're all in the undeposited funds so there they are so now we got to deposit them so i'm going to say all right now if we if we try to wait and do the bank feeds again you could say well can't i just wait till they clear the bank and do the bank feeds like we saw last time you can but you'll have the same problem because if i go to the bank feeds here and i say well i know they add up to this i mean i, I would have to search out and say oh that 195 looks like it might be like those three because if I then hit the drop down here and I say that deposit, if I want to go to the matching and see if they add up to any of my receipts, I can say, yeah, if I just check those three off, then that adds up to the 195.47. You can do that, but it's difficult because you got to you got to kind of figure that out as you're as you're doing this process. And you don't want to do that, really. What you'd like to do is have it clear the bank in the same grouping that it's on your books so that you can do that reconciliation process really easily. And so the only way to really do that if you're collecting multiple deposits is to use that undeposited funds, which is the reason QuickBooks has it as the default. So now you see the little three icons here indicating that we have three items in undeposited funds. The same thing would be the case, by the way, if we had sales like in the store, like a restaurant where you made a sale for cash and you, you use the create sales receipt increasing undeposited funds the other side going in that case to uh, directly sales so that would so if you made if you use this form you'd have the same thing here going into undeposited funds typically and then you're going to go in here and, and i'm going to say i'm going to make the deposit and i'm going to i'm going to check three of them off and say i'm going to deposit them at the same time imagining i'm going to the bank with the cash i got for these three deposits and i'm going to put it in there as of 628 for the for the amount of 195.47 that's the amount that I expect to be on the bank feeds when the bank feeds go through, which will make it easy for me to match. So I'm going to say save and close. I'm going to say yes. We're going to go back to the balance sheet. Check that out in the in the uh, checking account. Now, of course, we have the 195 somewhere, the 195 that we just put in place. There it is right there. So there's the 195 deposit, double clicking. There's the activity for it. The other side's in undeposited funds, which has now disappeared because it's gone. If you want to check it out, I like going to the trial balance to do so. Reports drop down, company and financial, trial balance, changing the dates up top from 010120 to 123120. There's the undeposited funds, double clicking on it. 
this shows you the detail of the activity. So it's going up by the 100, the 75, the 20, then down by 175, 20. If I click on any of these decreases, it'll take us to that deposit showing us the detail and then the total, which was the deposit of the 195.47. Now we can easily check this off and checking it off at this point, we're basically now already have the deposit in the books. So we're not recording anything different. We're basically just doing part of our bank reconciliation process. We did the whole system on our side. Now we're double checking it to the bank side, which is part of the process of doing a bank reconciliation. So then if we go back on over to the bank feeds, we're going to say, all right, let's check this out. We're looking now I can easily match it out. I can say there was a 195 amount. And if it wasn't already applied, QuickBooks would probably match it automatically based on the amount because we already set a rule to this account. It didn't find it, but it usually would. And then I can say, I'm going to, I want to add more details and see if I can match this out and matching it out now is going to be really easy because it, there's the 195 obviously is that 195 and I can then match it out. Once I do so, nothing new is going to happen in terms of changes to the financials, but it will basically be kind of like clearing. It'll be in the process of clearing. We're doing basically part of our bank reconciling process as we do this. So I'll save this one. And there we have it. If I go back up to the balance sheet then, and I go into the account here for that, uh, that 195. Now I got this little thingy thing that basically says it's kind of been cleared using your bank feeds type of thing, which means when we do our reconciliation, uh, it should be easier to, to do our reconciliation then.